Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about how to do peritoneal dialysis and how we need to set it up, all of the things we need to get, and then how to actually put everything together. So when you're getting ready for peritoneal dialysis, you want to have some of these products. You want to make sure you have an UltraSet CAPD disposable disconnect Y set. Occasionally you may need the PD transfer set. Sometimes this gets clogged, sometimes we need a new one. So this is available also, um, but we don't typically need that for every single exchange. You're also going to need lots of these mini caps with the povidone iodine solution in them. And then of course you're going to need your peritoneal dialysis solutions that we're gonna be instilling. Now on these bags, there's a couple things you wanna be checking. You should remember the acronym SEAL. SEAL stands for solution, meaning you wanna look at the percentage of the dextrose that's on the bag. On the end of these bags, there are colorful little caps that indicate and are color coded for the percentage of the dextrose that you'll be giving. So your yellow is 1.5, there's green, that's 2.5% dextrose, and there's also a red one as well, that's 4.5 dextrose. So SEAL stands for solution. E is expiration date, which should be on the top of your solution. A is amount. Your provider should be ordering a specific amount of dialysis solution that we're instilling. This is a 1000 ml bag, but typically it's usually a little bit more. So look, always check, double check how much you're going to be instilling. And then your L is leaks. So not only do you wanna check the bag for leaks, but eventually when you set this up, there's a little flange inside that you're going to have to crack and break. And sometimes that may crack the tubing there. So when you crack that and when you're ready to give it, always make sure it's not leaking at the site. Once you have these, a couple of other things you wanna remember. It is a sterile procedure, so you do wanna have sterile gloves. You wanna make sure you're putting on a mask for the patient and yourself. Any visitors that are coming should also have a mask. The only other thing that you are going to need is this scale, which we will use when we do the exchange to measure and weigh the amount of output that the patient will have with the dialysis solution. You can get this scale, it even tells us from central service or central supply rather. All right, so now let's say it is time to set up and complete the exchange. You're going to wanna to remember fill, dwell, and drain. Now typically when your patient comes, they already have had something filled in their peritoneal cavity. So we typically will start with the drain procedure because we wanna get rid of what's hanging out in their peritoneal cavity. So to get everything ready, you wanna first start with this ultra set, disconnect Y set. And when you open that up, there should be a little Y port here. Both of these clamps should be closed and you wanna make sure that you've got a bag attached to the end of your tubing here. We will first start with connecting the solution. So let's say we're going to be giving this 1.5% dextrose solution. We're going to again make sure the clamps are closed, take off the cap of the longer part of your Y, so you want the longer piece here. You're going to pull the cap of the solution and this just screws right on into the end. This hangs on the pole here and you're not going to open this flange yet. So just keep it hanging there. You don't have to do anything else with it. But now we wanna connect this part to our patient. So we're gonna pretend here we have our patient, the peritoneal, um, peritoneal uh, catheter is right here and the exchange transfer set is located and attached to their own catheter. This is considered their lifeline. So you wanna make sure you're keeping everything as clean as possible when you make this connection. You're going to remove the iodine cap. We're no longer gonna use this one. 
And we're gonna take the cap off of the remainder of the tubing here, and you're going to make the connection with this. Of course, wearing sterile gloves at this time. So as you have everything connected here, there should also be this bag with a clear and a cloudy side. So you wanna place the bag cloudy side down so that when you drain the peritoneal cavity, you can look and see the output. We're now ready to drain the abdomen. So right here with this connection, turn this so that the twisty part is all the way open and you should start to see some trickling down from that peritoneal cavity. Now, typically while you're seeing this, while you're looking at this, you do wanna know or make note that the patient is handling this okay. You wanna look at the output and make sure that it is clear. You should not have any bloody solution in here. And you wanna make sure that again, you're not seeing any sediment, any leaks or anything like that. But again, here we go on the bag, it's starting to drain. It should be nice and clear, no cloudiness and no blood. One of the first signs of peritonitis is cloudiness. So if you do see output that is cloudy, that is a warning sign of peritonitis and you wanna make sure you're notifying the provider. Once this is all completed, we're going to clamp our tubing, close this back up so the transfer set gets closed. And now before we fill that abdomen again, I want to weigh the amount of solution that's in the bag. And this should be filled. Today we only filled it a little bit, but you wanna make sure whatever is showing on here is equal to the amount that was placed into that abdomen before you drained it. Sometimes if you're not getting a lot of output, changing positions with the patient might help as well. Sometimes they need to sit up, sit on their side, but if the numbers are not quite equal or not even close, make sure you're repositioning the patient. Sometimes you will have more output. Sometimes you will have output that's very close. On a rare occasion, you may have a little less, but you should not have a significantly less amount of output from what you had previously put in. Once it's weighed, you can take that back off of the scale. And now it's time to fill the abdomen with the new solution. So from here, you're going to crack that flange. Once it's all cracked again, make sure that it's not leaking. And then we're again going to open up our catheter here with the transfer set. And we're going to unclamp this blue piece or the longer cord here, the longer tubing. And then you should start to see that solution go into their abdomen. While you're doing this, you wanna make note that the patient is tolerating it okay. They're not having any abdominal cramping with this. And once this is completed, it only takes about 10 to 20 minutes. You're going to clamp this off. Again, make sure the patient's feeling okay. And then we are completed. We've completed the entire process. You're going to disconnect this and you're going to get a new mini cap with that povidone iodine solution. Make sure that that cap is filled with iodine. It's not dried out. And we wanna cover our end piece here. So we're gonna cover that up. We're gonna close this off. And again, this now just gets taped to their abdomen so that it doesn't get pulled. And that's the end of the process. The last step is dwell, and that should be something that's ordered by the provider. The dwell time is typically between usually four to six hours. So once the solution's inside that stomach or the abdominal cavity, that's gonna sit there for four to six hours or however long it may be ordered and that's going to help to pull out any toxins, anything like that. One final step, your policy probably will say this and indicate this as well, but we do typically measure the amount of fluid in here. So the output, you're going to cut this and you wanna empty this into a graduate and measure the exact amount 
so that you can document that. And that's it.